All right. So um, I will do a demonstration of a portrait study. Uh, portrait study uh, with uh, some watercolor uh, medium. Uh, I have to explain that uh, it's not a watercolor painting uh, tutorial. Uh, it's more about portrait study. Uh, it's not a typical watercolor uh, teaching because it's not a painting class. Uh, I would just uh, consider uh, watercolor as the one of the medium uh, we use uh, for our portrait study. Okay, uh, make sure this is uh, important. Uh, and for me, uh, it's not my often used medium. Uh, I don't have so much experience of using the watercolor. Uh, even I do some watercolor, it's mostly uh, served for, for my drawing and some other ideas. So uh, I, I use this medium, it's just for, uh, for trying, okay? So things uh, students know that I, I'm not often use the watercolor to do my artwork. So maybe it's a encouragement for them to uh, try the uh, different media, even you're not used to. Okay. So um, as, a, as a drawing, maybe I don't have to outline so much uh, before, before a formal uh, drawing. Sometimes I hit the camera because camera is right in front of my in, in front of my head so maybe so I not touch it so for one color medium uh, I'm using the I'm using the uh, watercolor paper so somehow it's not so forgivable if there is a mistake so kind of like it uh, I'm not very sure, so I, I needed to use pencil to outline the shape, first of all. Uh, uh, let's see the uh, situation. So, actually, the, my camera is a little bit higher, but then I don't want to change anymore because it will cause some mistake. So, so outline process is similar like a drawing. So I catch the shape out all of the outline first. So it's mostly like a easy to, to check the, the big shape is important because it's a part of the impression. So when the total shape, the big shape, Catch uh, first, and then start to work on the features. So this big shape, so it's like an impression um, of the model. Um, and then I will try to uh, catch the, the shape of the features. So sometimes it depends. For this model, uh, this kind of lighting function, I feel like it's easy to, for me to find the shape of the shape of the light part and the shape shape of the dark part. So it, it helps me to, to, to correct my shape. So like this, and then I will work on the features. Features is the eyeball and the eye. So you still need to see that two eyes, which one higher, which one lower. And the gesture is important. So and then the nose always hit my shoulder. I have to uh, mention that some students do a line for the nose, very dark. Uh, 
maybe for cartoon or um, for some uh, animation, graphic design, that's okay. But for drawing, you need to be very careful. Uh, this line, don't make it too dark because they are not existing uh, a, a simple edge line like that. But for, for outline at the beginning, you need to see the whole tendency you can do this, but uh, later you have to give it a more detailed information. So uh, yeah, on this step, I do it this, but uh, the later I will correct it. Only uncomfortable thing is the, the cell phone uh, camera um, camera with the uh, metal uh, bar. Really, um, obstacle of my arm and the shoulder. So it's a little awkward. Or not very careful. I can hit the. I can hit the uh, camera and shoot him. Each model's next step is different. At the beginning, uh, I catch it. The bigger line, so I have to be nice with This is this step is the most uh, most uh, big shape. Yeah. Then after this step, we'll work on more detail on features. So uh, I will draw features. Still using the pencil. Still using the pencil. So it should be yeah. um, usually for for drawing I use like a three B four B you know, soft pencil, but for watercolor I'm I'm worried about the the edge of the uh, graphite could could damage the um, paper for 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 the color. So I use a little bit more hard pencil. I feel it's more safe. Some later work, so I, I do not use very soft pencil. I use the HD split. Yeah, but I, I like the needed eraser. It's for for. If I wanted to erase it, I can just sit like this way to absorb the uh, edge. So it's easy to easy to clean. And the, also the uh, watercolor paper. I use the watercolor paper. It will look it feel like more easy to to draw yeah, because the, the the surface of the watercolor paper is more rough. 
actually the uh, good nice paper does not seem the surface should be very fine. Sometimes the rough uh, surface paper uh, it's, it's more easy to work out. Uh, not to conflict uh, with the detailed drawing. But, uh, but of course it depends on the personal habits. I feel like the watercolor paper. Um, sometimes the watercolor paper is good for uh, working with the charcoal as well. Some some of my previous early time uh, charcoal work uh, uh, work I done on the watercolor paper and the, the create the texture uh, much more like a canvas painting. Um, also, also I, I tried some, um, I tried some uh, paint and drawing uh, with charcoal uh, on the Chinese uh, rice paper uh, because the rice paper, uh, Chinese rice paper uh, has much more softer. Um, it's much more softer um, surface and more sensitive, more more sensitive of the um, more smooth, yeah, for charcoal drawing. However, uh, the only weak point of the uh, uh, rice paper is the rice paper is a little bit more fragile. It's easy to uh, break if you. Um, draw too much harsh, um, too much force, um, and uh, that causes the uh, some some little broken. Uh, yeah, and rice paper. Yeah, I feel the rice paper, and especially cannot erase too much. Almost not not erase. So so somehow. When you draw on the uh, Chinese uh, rice paper, you have to be uh, much more prepared, uh, sure what are you doing at a, every moment. So maybe that that is a little bit challenging for most of artists. So many artists are using rice paper for charcoal drawing. Uh, it's just a kind of my personal, personal experience. Um, and, the, and, and I believe the, the watercolor paper, I feel that's the best for the charcoal. And we were not using the charcoal right now for topic. So for demonstration, sometimes uh, it's interesting to talk something. It's not unnecessary so much formally like uh, uh, talking about about the the technique. Sometimes uh, talking about talk about the experience is good. And uh, like it, this this work demonstration is not a Typical, not a typical uh, watercolor process. So I don't know which one. This is a little bit of the process. So I, I complete the feature outline. Yeah. I'm a little bit careful about this because I, I don't want to um, trouble myself um, later because of the uh, mistake. So I try to make it a much more complete outline. So, so when I do the watercolor, it's easy to find the shape. It's important. Because, uh, I 
have to wait until doing the color, making the color in the in the work, and then to pick out the function to the map. So it's easier for me to to have the shape, most of the shape. Um, nail down for that. So I I complete the um I complete the process of the outline, but I feel like it, the eye for this one could be a little more I go a little bit. Okay, so um, I finished this one, and uh, now I'm I'm going to use a special kind of material. I recently tried. It's the uh, um, water solid uh, color pencil. I use a uh, dark brown color. But it's good for drawing the details because even if I do the watercolor. I don't think I have such small uh, brush to work on super tiny details with the uh, solid line that, like I'm doing. Right? So I never so much sharp line I can do for using the brush. So I feel like the So I'll be using the pencil, watercolor pencil helps me, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to um, use the brush to outline it in the future. And especially with very detailed things like this, um, the pencil helps, the pencil helps. The, uh, Because it's a water solid, so uh, I also can do add this later uh, when the uh, most of the color is done. So um, it, it's more easy to uh, uh, more easy to merge into merge into the watercolor brush uh, other colors. So I think this is a good. Uh, be careful when you draw this eye. Uh, it, actually, it's the side of the eye, so it needs to be more shorter, more shorter. So the, the open, uh, the, the height of it, the height of it is similar with this one, a little bit short. The, the length of it, uh, the width of it is getting shorter, so I'll check there. Important to, to to draw the feature. Okay. Maybe the camera of my cell phone is a little bit too much approach to this side. So this side a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. I feel okay. But I'm I'm very uh, prudent to use the black color. Uh, even when you watch the look at the photo, it looks like a black. However, it's not really necessary to use the black because uh, this is really dark enough. And black color usually is too neutral. Um, too neutral color. It's not really like a, you can tell like it's a warm color or it's a cold color. 
uh, it cannot really create a relation in your work, you know. So um, I prefer not to use the black, but sometimes if you really need the black to create some special function, you can use the black, but a very, very special situation. Most of the situation, a brown color, it's kind of like a warm color, right? Yeah. Uh, it's enough. Uh, enough. It's really enough for, for even very dark uh, area. Uh, painting, all the uh, watercolor paint, different with the drawing. So when drawing, I tended to, um, when I draw uh, a dark color, I tended to make it as dark as possible because the drawing is a creating a relation between uh, the, the, between different tones. So when it needed to be contrasted, it could be absolutely contrasted, um, extremely uh, contrasted. So that the black color uh, can contrast with the white. Right? So usually when we put the joint, we keep the white, right? Uh, but, the, but for color uh, painting, I'm not talking watercolor. Watercolor maybe most of the situation uh, we keep the white, uh, but for painting, not so much white we leave. Um, in the, in the, in the canvas. So white also is a neutral color, not not goes to any cold or goes to any warm color, but usually we um, blend the white with some a little, little bit of cool, cooler, like a blue, you know, gray blue color, or a little bit warm color, like yellow. Uh, but yeah, so so that could could create some some um, different turn off. But uh, but for purely a white color and purely a black color, it does not so much make sense in the painting because I'm a professional painter. So um, so that's why I do not often use black for for painting. Uh, but sometimes we create the create the uh, the the work. We looks like a black because that's the function, you know, the black function. So, for example, we 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 do a, a painting uh, if lady uh, wear the black uh, clothes, right? We still let the audience. Understand that the black uh, clothes. Yeah. But actually, it's not totally using the purely the black color, but the we 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 mix the uh, um, color into the uh, very dark that dark tune uh, to create that. So this is important to understand. Uh, so basically, what we create on our work does not mean the pigment. Exactly, is that color? So we create that illusion. Also, we create the color relation. I don't have to do too much of uh, this color because a little bit waste. Uh, because this, I have a pencil box, <laughs> uh, a box of the uh, color I already used out this. And I have to buy another one to replace that because the brown color, I feel like it is most most useful for myself. So, okay, so I use this uh, pencil. It's uh, it's easy to uh, yeah melt with the water. Uh, so okay, so outline process is done, and now I'm going to use the watercolor. So, it's a little bit difficult for me to hold both the photo and the, my watercolor plate and the brush. So, somehow, 
At the very beginning, uh, of course, my process is not a typical watercolor process. I'm more like a, I, I, I used to use the oil painting, so it's not maybe a little bit too rough way to do the, uh, very rough way to do the watercolor like I do. So, That's why I shouldn't draw too much of the watercolor pencil because it, it melt and make the color really dark. I draw this part, I feel the color is not just brown, it's a little bit more purple and blue color. And then I this part, sorry, I hit the camera. Mm. And uh, this part is the refractive size face. It's more like a yellow, a little yellow color, an orange color, a yellow and orange. But it's lighter, little, little light. I don't think I can create a very fine surface because uh, the way of the painting and the watercolor is different. So for watercolor, you have to be very patient to to make the water create the function to make everything like smoothly like a, um, transmission. But I, I'm not I'm not doing like that good. So um, I, you can still see the uh, brush of my work. Um, I'm not so much higher the quiet because I will do a little more. You know, even I doing like this, probably you can see that I creating the light and the dark. I do this dark part first. And if it's drawing, I would do the whole thing, but for painting, uh, for watercolor, I'm a little bit conservative to do the, this part. I will keep, wait a while, because this color is different with this part. So, uh, but I have that in my mind, but I will do that later. I will do that later. But uh, I have to do the features, and the, I can tell the difference colors of the feature. And then for the a little more bony part, this part, the color tended to be a little more cold because I don't know, it goes to more cold color. And here the color a little bit more darker. darker. I feel like this color is okay. But I try to leave the reflected light. So this part of the reflect light is pretty strong. So I do this. Okay, see, drawing the nose. It's not simply a straight line, but it's more more like a line, like a curve, because it has some, you need a concern about the structure of the nose. And so it's not totally just a straight line. So and then you need to create the slope uh, to make the color of the nose merge onto the face. Now here is the very light color. But sometimes when I have this color, when I feel like this color can use for hair, yeah, for painting, I would just do this. It's not a plan to do this, but when I feel like this 
color can work for hair, I will do it in hair. So, then this part, a little bit more cooler color, but maybe in the hair, not so much obvious, but I, I myself feels different. Sometimes when you draw the color, as long as you yourself feel something different, you can just paint. You need to make yourself feel color differently. And then next to the story, you can see from the camera. Maybe on the camera, it looks so same, but uh, for myself, I, I keep on switching the color a little bit. Switching the color a little bit. Sometimes adding a little bit, a little bit of blue. Sometimes I added, adding a little bit of green, adding a little bit, you know, but maybe from the camera, it looks no different. So that's what I think. I, I try to wash it. Let's see if watercolor can wash. Yeah, mostly it can wash. If it's not a totally a highlight, you can just uh, use the clear water to have, have your brush to clean. It can go away. Yeah. So, so this is okay. Work on, I will not work on the lips, although the lips look red, but I would do the rest of the color first because the red is easy to dye into the place you don't want, want it red. So I will do very light color first. Usually the watercolor, um, we start from very light color, then the darker color because it's transparent the color. It cannot uh, co cover the uh, the color from uh, the light color on the dark color. So have to do the uh, light color first. So this is the different consequence with the oil painting or acrylic acrylic painting. So acrylic painting or oil painting. Usually I I prefer to start work on the very dark color and the light color because I always can adding the light color later. Um, so, but for watercolor, I feel like and at least of my understanding needed to work on the light first. So this is also a mistake. Yeah. I needed to prepare for for the very final result by doing this because it's a very, very light and a gray color. So when you look at the photo, you see this, this light color, color part is not really a white. We have different color, but, but, but like this part, I feel like a little bit of green color and this part is a little bit red. So somehow like this side, a little more cooler system. Uh, yeah, for color painter, you need a very sensitive of the small tone uh, to tell the difference. And uh, yeah, that's the, the painting. And this side a little bit more. I keep on not the canvas because it, it does rock my way to paint. So, okay, so this side of the chair, the cheek, is a more warm color. So you can see that. You can see that, yeah. Right, but you see this warm color, just a very, very little bit. I feel like the lens. It's a little bit of tend to be gray and the cooler color, the lens. But uh, in my eyes, my my picture looks warmer. So I don't mind. I can I can photo a nice one when I finish the work.
sometimes um, painters holding brush, not only just the one, they're holding several sticks of brush together, work together, because sometimes they, they kind of, they can switch the brush from hand to hand. So it's easier to create the, uh, they're faster to create the different tune. But however, when I'm not so used to do the, this medium, I've, I use the one stick, it's easy for me to concentrate um, on the, the, the brush itself. You know? Although that the speed will not as fast as using the several brushes, but, but I, I don't feel like it's really uh, hurt. Uh, I don't feel it's hurt, but it still can work out. So sometimes I, I, my habit is more tend to be work with the one brush to work. <laughs> keep on working with the one brush. I feel like it's easy for me to focus in on the on the on the on the process. Depends. Um, I cannot say I cannot say which one is good. There are no rules in the, in the art. Uh, everyone's habits different. So um, yeah because I was not taught by a certain teacher how to paint. Or how to draw because uh, in my school and I feel like this kind of topic is too low right so you have to figure out the way by by yourself uh, so for artists uh, and the treats and method for yourself it's, it's a very basic skill um, but for teach teacher uh, we have to find a crew better to serve students. But for, for ourselves, sometimes we're not able to follow the rules. So, um, okay, so I work on the, on the neck and the chest, but you can see that they're very small color in the neck, but you always need to keep some, some part light, you know, because this is a watercolor. Um, even from very light part, you have to be careful, okay? Because it's, you cannot correct it. I cannot correct it. So, so even doing this, you have to be careful. Yeah, somehow watercolor, I feel like it's not as relaxed as a painting because painting is more relaxable. So personally, I'm, I'm not so much like to watercolor, I feel like it's more challenging for, for focusing, you know, not so relaxed, so yeah, I should say that. So, just a personal, personal thing. But of course, when you used to do this media, you, you have more skill based, of course, you can do more relaxed, more relaxed. Than this. When I'm talking is about compare like a, like a trying the media level uh, to compare the different media, not a truth for expert. Uh, so also the brush itself. Um, most of artists uh, do the training artists that they, they, they do the brush with, they, they not only use one brush, they switching the brush from big one to, to small one, you know, they, 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 they switching the brush, but, the, but sometimes uh, I am lazy to switch too much of that. I feel like if I switch too much, I have to make myself used to a certain size of the brush. So sometimes I just like the medium size to keep on working. But unless I, I feel like I really need a certain, uh, really like I really need a one kind of brush, I, I, will, I, will, I will switch to a, another size of the brush. So, 
maybe this is not a good habit, maybe, who knows. So, I'm, I'm still working on this part. I also taught you, like, is the core area of the shadow, right? So it's very important to create the, the, the transmission from light to dark, and it's from very dark, very contrasted part to the, to the refracted area. So sometimes a good work is very much uh, critical for a good work on this area. Uh, the looks are so soft and not so important, but actually it's, it's, it's very critical. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's more critical than features sometimes. Okay, now I'm working on the, I, I hope <laughs> you still have patience to watch. But I'm, now I'm working on the dark area of her decoration on the hair. So as a watercolor, I try to keep it, keep it a little decorative color, a little bit more fresh than, than the actual need. So because it's easy to be, looks, dark, so it looks dirty, so I make it I carefully to, to do the color not too, not too gray, so I try to keep the fresh color, keep the fresh color, so too many things, so be patient to do this. I do this is the, it's my habit to usually start from the um, most of the dark part, you know, when I draw details. So maybe for typical um, watercolor process, you needed to start from light color. Maybe that's much more functional, much more safe. Okay, so the, it's my habit to start to work on most uh, dark part. So this the light part is still adding, still needed to add in more light color. But, then, but it's not that safe to keep working like this. But anyway, I feel, I feel okay. Right now I feel okay. Got to work on the ear. So the middle bit part is ear. Make sure the color of the ear should be similar with the facial, but a little bit lighter than this part of the darkening this part. So this is the ear needed to work. Okay. The camera is right in front of me, so it's very easy to see. I will wait until this is dry, and then I will work on the area between them, which are very easy to make mistakes. So I will do this a little bit later. I will do this later. So I'm now I'm working on the hair. So here, her hair is red color. Um, but actually it's not, a, there's no actual red color, but it's just actually the more brown uh, tended to, to red. It's important to when you draw the hair, don't just do a isolated color between the hair and the skin. So usually when we draw the hair, we need to get a little smooth um, um, transmission from here to the skin. So this is important. Okay, so I'll do this part of here, it's okay. Now I need to do And when you watch the video, probably you feel like I, it took a long time to watch, but actually for painter, it's already very fast to paint. Actually, um, myself, it's not so patient people and sometimes 
I, 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 I much more like to be more productive. And sometimes it's a little too much rough, you know. And this is a nice problem. I always easy to very roughly and quick to finish the work. So um, better to slow down, but I still like to have my stomach asking me to, to, to eat more and more faster. So that's the problem. If you slow down, sometimes you get a better result. So here, the hair itself, you see, it's not a totally the same color. And then this part tends to light the part a little more yellower. This part a little yellower. So this part, you can a little more gray. A little more gray and then not so red anymore, right? So the, this part, this part a little more red. So you need to compare them each other. Although for the color, uh, you feel like it's supposed to be the same color, right? And it's the same color on different edge, or different direction, or different environment is supposed to be a different color. So I also work, I want to work on the shadow for the, for this red, uh, I don't know what's the word for that, uh, belt, red belt. So I want to draw this shadow first. Because sometimes when you, after you draw the red, it's very hard to edit this color because this is important. And this color of the uh, red color is pretty fresh. So I will not do it too much right now. Now I work on the background. You know why when I go to the background, it helps me to compare the, the color each other to get the, the feeling of the the color, you could get to compare the color of the skin. And uh, sometimes uh, as a professional watercolor painter, maybe they will use the wa water to, to, to wet this part first because that's easier to make the color smudge each other and easier to make it a smooth looking. Um, I'm a little bit lazy to do that. I would just do like a paint. So, because the background is more blue and you feel like the, the skin based on this color compared, you will feel the skin is more what? More orange, more warm. Right, so this is the color theory. So it's important. Otherwise, maybe you already make the skin very, very much warm, but because you're not comparing with the surrounding color, you will not feel like that's enough. You feel like some people will keep on working on on the on the warm color. Uh, until it's very red, they didn't notice that because it's not compared. So that's why it's important to sometimes to work on the background. So of course, if you have very much experience or either your painting process is like a totally photo based, you, you, you get the color prepared, not a, like this method I I teaching is more like a, a painting from the observation way, right? So if you work this, uh, use a photo based, totally photo based process, sometimes it doesn't matter because you could enlarge, some, some people enlarge your image super big and look into that area, the color is color. It, it's more objective, so no worry too much of that. But for 
for painting from the life. Uh, this is the important that you needed to think about and the process uh, work with the comparison of the warm and the cool. Um, and also the color, you know, also quite different kind of contrast. Okay, I'm doing here a little more purple. You know what, because the, the contrast is weaker because it, this is more red. So red and the purple more like a neighbor. So although audiences still can tell this is a different color, but but it's a little more close by, right? So I'm not actually looking at the, my photo to paint. I'm looking on the relation to paint. So this is more like neighbors together. So. The color is also like a um, drawing. It's also about a relation, not about the, the isolated color itself. So that's that's why I teach this is more like a, 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 okay. So okay. So now I I'm going to work on the uh, features. So I select a little smaller brush to work on features. So first I, I want to make the eyeball, the white part, not so white, because it creates something, a mistake that I feel like it's totally white. So no, actually it's not white. A little blue, blue and the, Although when, when it's light, very light, you don't feel like it's blue, right? But actually compared to the skin, it's more blue. I'm not talking about the, the purple. I'm talking about the, the white part of ice. Uh, it's more blue here. Don't keep it white. That's why it's totally white. There's no, no color relation. There's no color relation, that means no no warm or dark, warm or um, cold. Okay, now I'm sorry, I hit it again. So now I work on the purple. Work on the purple with most dark part. And I work on the eyelid. This is important. Eyelid. I use pretty brown and a little bit blue color and a brown color mixed to create a very dark color compared to others. Uh, this is a very dark. Also the, the pupil part is pretty dark. Um, so, so you don't put this everywhere. Uh, the color also need changes. For example, here is more red, more warm. Now you can compare that. You can see the color here is more warm. Okay. Now, when I look at this, I feel like, oh, this, this part is similar. I would do this, do the notes. Uh, this hallway part. And also the has the shadow of nose. Okay. Don't, don't do it black, okay? Keep, keep it a warm color because whatever is the skin around and original skin and looks more warm. So this side of the eye, I will do the, and maybe on the video, look at the color looks like black, but actually not using the black. Uh, because the camera is not that smart. Okay, so now I do the eye mesh. Mesh. And the top part eye mesh and the lower part eye mesh. So 
here and still have the eyelash. Now, because I already did this light part of color in the last step, so now I'm, I'm comfortable to add in the eyelash on top of it. The ladies' portrait sometimes not so relaxing because I cannot make any mistake. Okay, so I did this, and then the shadow of the eyelash will look more lighter and more brown color. I feel the shadow of the eyelash. A little bit more, not too much, not too much. A little bit, this way you can only you can see up this the shadow. And then I will draw the eyebrows. The eyebrow is more brown and orange. Color is more brown color, orange color. Usually this part is most dark in the white because it's not just the color of the eyebrow, it's more about a shadow for the eyebrow bone, right? So it's underneath that, the bone. So this part is most dark in this. And then when we draw this part, the hair color may be the same, but actually the, the function is different, right? So you see here, it's lighter, it's lighter. So same color hair, you need to check the, the volume status to decide what the color we will use for that. So this is, um, yeah, I think a little bit not so, not so detailed. Huh? So, more a bit. so here the, the lower part of the, this part of the eyebrow is a bit darker because it's on, in the shadow. In the shadow. So, Shape of the, the eyebrow looks here, maybe a little bit wider. I think this is a, a making up uh, start, right? So it's not, well, not so much nature, but it's, but it's okay. So, yeah, the, the, the brush stroke of the line is important to make, make the uh, eyebrow look more uh, natural. Uh, so now I'm working on the lips, uh, lips. Actually her lips a little more cooler color, not just a red, a little bit cooler. However, I don't have this type of pigment on the watercolor. So I cannot uh, precisely to create the, the color like that. So that the only, only way is that I can just uh, roughly, not roughly to, Paint it. Uh, I prefer to do the eye uh, lips, not entirely because the hair more cooler, hair more warmer, and the, this part is a little warmer because this is a facing to the light. So each part is different. So so don't don't just do it really like a makeup. So you need to consider it belongs to different angle different color belongs to different angle. The result of the color is different. You see, this is warmer, it's cooler, uh, it's different. Maybe maybe on the camera it looks so similar because the camera cannot catch this soft color. But when, when we paint, you well, we need to tell like this. And this, this is the, the way to draw the lips. You need to follow the texture. So you see, it's, it's, you need to leave the highlights, 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 and then draw it. So, okay, so now maybe the way I do is a little bit too, a little bit lighter than the actual, a little bit darker. Okay, 
and then we're adding a little more gray color underneath the lid because that's the step of what I do in the fit brush room. I, 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 I sometimes I can forgot some, I could have forgot, forget some, some little areas. So using a small, a small brush to fix that. This is this is my habit is to use the brush like a, like the pencil with like a hatching with right, uh, but I like it maybe maybe it's not typical painting method. I have a, yeah, I I feel like this. And here I make it the line uh, a little different. Uh, softer and hard different because this is a little bit too too much thing. So I need to create a little bit transformation between the background and the and the cheek. We see that there's a little bit, a little bit uh, switch from from light to background. Yeah. I'm working on this here. So this part of the hair can adding, you know, because I already adding the background, so it's good for me to directly adding the line for the hair. So we cut. Okay. Then, then I can I think I could add in more hair part and the, the background. Okay, and more. Somehow the uh, watercolor do not require to to do too much detail difference of the color. The basic color uh, needed to be correct, and the, the big relation needed to be clear. And, and then for detail, it doesn't so much matter. So you can do use the similar color to keep on keep on painting. Details. Yeah. So here, I see some highlights. Sometimes, the, when we draw the watercolor, we can keep something um, highlight. Uh, although it's not so much accurate, but uh, sometimes uh, when we feel like it. Some highlight looks looks uh, looks smart, <laughs> looks uh, looks good, feels good. Uh, you don't have to uh, correct it to a uh, photo looking. Uh, we can we can just uh, follow follow the the function uh, we created. Follow something we like to keep. So this is important. Somehow the watercolor, um, a little more like a, uh, I used to work with the Chinese painting because it used more water based and then more like a, a natural and more like a freedom uh, process. So sometimes um, keep some brush stroke and they keep some uh, interesting details, although maybe not so accurate compared to the realistic, uh, but that's good. So th this is uh, my understanding of the color. And uh, yeah, now I try to fix this little detail. It's about a shadow underneath the flower, I call it flower, so this is like an ornament for the, for the head. So keep that shadow. It's a little bit of a weird situation because it's already inside of the shadow, right? But it's because of the, the, the stuff she wear, we we'll create this differently. So that's why um, I separate it to deal with and then also the, also 
for the uh, the camera catch a more sharp and the contrast that we have with the real world in the lighter. As long as I have time, I can do more details. Yeah, now the quality of the work mostly based on how much patience and how much detail I could add into the work. But the, the, the deep, most of the big functions has been, has been cut. So, so I think, uh, yeah, so I'm um, more relaxing to work. Um, yeah, so the, the, the still need a lot of work. So now I'm adding more detailed brush on the hair. So sometimes that creates something interesting details. I feel not so comfortable with the brush. I feel like I keep on dry out. I have to add in the more water and the color, maybe because of the weather. I feel that Los Angeles is way more dry than I want. So sometimes it's dry too fast. Uh, cannot fit very smooth looking details. But anyway, maybe for beginners, it's better to, 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 to create something to, for controlling, but maybe not so much good for, for a special function of the work. Um, and remind me something like a Chinese painter, um, you know, Chinese ink and a brush skill, uh, very based on the, the climate, the weather, the feeling of the ink and the brush, and also the rice paper. Uh, and uh, that's why most of the master, master of the Chinese painter, they always live in the Wherever they born, but they mostly always live in the south uh, east of China because the weather much more uh, creates uh, that's more much more good for these masters, uh, master artists. If you mention about the master artists of Chinese painter, mostly they, they live in the south southeast China, like the Hangzhou, Shanghai. Hangzhou area, especially Hangzhou. Uh, but northern Chinese, maybe. Um, yeah, good for painter, but they're more better for oil painter. So, so somehow they, they have more oil painter living in the north because this area, that area is more dry. And the, the, the oil paint is easy to dry and it's good for. Yeah, it's good for keep on working, uh, right? If you live in Southeast China, if you work on the oil painting, sometimes you have to wait a long, long, long time for a, a dry of a, for, for dry of your paint, right? So because the weather is too humid and wet, and the, that's not good for for, for oil painting. Uh, but of course. People live in the south east China. Even they do the oil painting, they, they create different different style, right? So they, they create more abstract, more more freedom looking, more not not necessarily just a realistic style. Um, that's why the mother school of mine, China Academy of Art, uh, we have very Famous, famous artists, most of the uh, contemporary modernism, modest artists, modern artists. Uh, they were living in that area. Their, their work not not necessarily typical realistic painting, painting, but they are very successful on some abstract painting, like. Uh, Zhao Wuji, Wu Ki Zhao, and uh, it's a famous one in 
in the front. And then we'll have this there's the famous painter um, artist in, 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 in here. Yeah, uh, in France. And the uh, um and uh, his work I uh, his works are very much influenced by by Chinese painting. Although when he was in the school, his his grid of the Chinese painting was not good. And the, um, I hear that the professor and his, and the, his uh, Chinese painting professor uh, was uh, a famous uh, famous artist, Fan Tianshu, probably. <laughs> it's, it's something talked. I, I never searched the, the detailed information. I, I can still give him give him the grade. It's like a very very bad grade, maybe even not passed, uh, maybe like a B, maybe. Um, okay, when I talk, it's not so, so totally um, fact based. Okay, it's just just something like a legend. It's just treated like a legend. So that um, I hear that I like. So his grade was not so good. However, he he got he really got the influence from Chinese painting. So not the typically like the Chinese painting skill, but it's more like an influence of of a cultural cultural influence or something like that. Understanding of the uh, traditional uh, poem and the literature. So yeah, that's why sometimes the way grading our students' work, um, it's not so much really important to, to just base on their work, uh, but it's more important to base on their how much they receive from your class, you know, how much they influence and maybe functional, useful for their future. You know, it's more like a student themselves uh, centered. It's more important to them. Yeah, there and then this middle school, high school grading way, you know. So yeah, always observe this situation happen and the students are not so much yeah. <laughs> I can see that but somehow um, too much uh, common standard. Maybe it's good, maybe not not so much encouragement. So yeah, as an educator, you must know that. Uh, also, yeah, because I, even when I was in the school, uh, the major I learned, uh, most of the thing I learned was not about today my drawing, my, my painting skill. So most of the skill is um, coined by myself. Um, so the teacher in the school teaches the way how we do the research, um, understanding and the discover stuff by ourselves. It's more important than just the skill. You know? So that's why even I do the demonstration. If if student happen to have the patience to to watch, I'm not asking them to to watch the process and the follow this like a formula. Even myself, it's not sure if it's correct or not, but, but, but I much more encourage a student to understand that this kind of process you can create by yourself and it you know, depends on what you want. So um, uh, this is the purpose why, why I, I do demonstration here. I different with most of uh, these famous art teachers um, face. I'm pretty sure I'm different with them because I'm not so much just a, a skill based, uh, and then not so much like a typical skill. You no, know, like only skill learn. And then you use that for your life. It's more like uh, I prefer to uh, open, open um, process 
for students to 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 try the skill and try the medium and find their their own method to work more important. So um, okay, now I'm working on the clothes. I, I make this color the red. I adding some yellow to compare with this part. Uh, I don't know the camera can catch that. Right? It's more warmer and different. So we needed some a little bit difference of the color. Even even the photo looks so similar, but it needs a little difference. The for the blue color here, I really cannot find a good blue color for that. Maybe for watercolor, the only way is to 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 add in more water. <laughs> Any more water for this color? So maybe any more water and keep a more light. So I needed to actually I needed to make my brush more clean to do this. So and I also don't don't need to have a big big brush, uh, a small brush. It's better to use the big brush. So I use the, this brush. Okay, so try use this. I want the light blue color, but I don't have that pigment. And the, in watercolor, we do not really allow to adding any adding any uh, white. Uh, so this is a little difficulty to to use the watercolor to to create this uh, fur. Maybe this is a skirt uh, blue color. So I just uh, skip that. So um, another way is that. Uh, Keep this a little light blue and then make the background much darker. Maybe that can help with um, compare um, each other to create the feeling of the dark blue color. But, uh, but I don't think it's so much necessary. Um, we, can, we can do more on other part, not just for this color. I feel like I need adding the background a little more darker. Yeah. So this may be not so professional. It's better to one time to com complete it. When, when adding the color, it's better to, to uh, water the, the paper first so that they can they can smudge each other together. But the way I'm doing is more like oil painting. I don't so much mind. So I just add this. But sometimes the, when I use the brush, don't don't do it like a, like a painting the wall. You don't have to do it totally totally flat. Uh, although you look at the photo, it looks flat. But uh, actually, for 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 painting. It's better to keep something like a, a Chinese painting we call it. keep it uh, brief. Keep it brief. So like it, it have space inside of the space. It have some some space inside of that space you did. So keep something uh, brief. That's important. Don't don't like the painting everywhere uh, flat. So I will adjust the camera a little bit. That's the camera not looking at it. But anyway, it's not so important. Yeah, here has a little bit shadow, shadow of the uh, device. So. You see the here lower part. I didn't join this. I, I will crop up this part because maybe a signature for here is okay, but this color blue color is, is the way I want. I cannot. I cannot work too much on it. Now I I needed to work more on the on the on the half tone so that I can create more details. So I, what time? Two, two. We have some time to work on this. 
example I said, this is a demonstration just for just as a reference. So if you consider a um, technique part, most of thing has been done. Uh, um, but uh, for the work itself, I'll keep, keep on working a little more detail so that so that I can uh, complete it in a much more rhythm. Um, so I use a small brush uh, to adding details. So uh, I did this part a little bit with the um, watercolor pencil, but now I'm using the brush to adding more details. Uh, so not sure how did it turn out. Also, this area. So there's some part, maybe it has the shadow and also the eyelash. Oh, actually, I forgot one thing. I forgot the, the pupil part, the brown color, huh, the big, and the big area with the more brown color, but I leave the I will leave the um, highlight part white for the most of part. Getting the brown color, <laughs> two eyes. I didn't get in that. That is something I did mistake. Adding this brown color. This is for the purple. Uh -huh. Now I. See that under the eyelid, pretty warm color. You can see the thickness, thickness of the eyelid. That, yeah, so this is the way to edit this kind of eye much more properly. Here I have some a white part because this is a reflection. So, but I didn't, I forgot to leave this white. But anyway, I can add in a little more gray color for the for this part to compare with that. This eye is more completed. Looks more completed now. So this part I added a, a brush a little bit too too dark. So I I adding more this way. So sometimes the watercolor um, you cannot you cannot erase right. So if it's a mistake, if it's a big mistake, sometimes it can damage the whole work. So sometimes the process of the uh, work is needed to be prudent. Like I said, it's a little more nervous than uh, painting, I guess, uh, what uh, oil painting. So have to be prudent, especially the light part. You, you cannot redo it. So here I'm adding a little bit gray color. This is more bony part, a little bit cartilage. Uh, so, uh, and then here a little inside. And here is about a tip of the nose. So if there is a gray color, uh, it's a good to adding very small piece of gray, but uh, using a line to do is also all right if, it's, if the work is not that detailed. Uh, if the work is not that detailed, adding that gray. And underneath the nose tip, the color is a little bit gray uh, because it's not a lot, really not a white color. Okay, uh, even here, gray color is a little bit of cooler color. 
and maybe you feel like it's so dangerous to work on this because the nose looks should be looks more 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 white but however you have to take the advantage right so underneath the nose and here also a part of the cast the shadow so adding a cast the shadow and here also this part is darker and you so basically the dark part you can it's more easy to add in details because it's not a lady taking this one. So yeah, a little mistake is okay. So uh, light part, very careful. So now I'm working on this part. Let's see the gray color, lower eyelid. And here, this part, I also forgot, is the side of the, it's the side of the, of the thickness of the, Eyelid on the side, so it's a little bit of warmer, warmer color. Okay, and uh, this side is a little bit darker, and the shadow. I use a very small brush, very small, not super small, but it's really small. So it helps to create the small details. Okay, then I work on it. My phone. Okay. So now I work on the hair. The side the hair. Actually, it's the shadow of the decoration stuff of the hair. So sometimes you need to see the clearance differently. So you see here more furry, and here suddenly a little more clear. So keep the brush on it. So you need to see that the difference is important. Uh, it's important to create that details. Okay. Now I can add in more for her mouth and you see the dark and a little bit warm, I think a little bit warm uh, red color. I think a little bit of black, but adding red and dark brown together. So you can see the line, but you need to tell that it's different this side and this side. So this side the more dark, that side light is important. Don't, don't do that totally thing. And uh, I'll add in a little more the details of the texture of that. So her um, eye, mouth, lip is really, really thin, right? So it's a little difficult. Okay. And uh, I think I my pencil stroke. Now it looks very obvious uh, in my original work, maybe in the, in the photo not so much, but in the original work. So that's why the pencil stroke sometimes need to be very careful. Um, let's draw it. So facial part mostly are done. Mostly are done. So more detail, we can add in the more on the cheekbone. And the, the very careful, don't 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 totally erase the don't don't totally erase that um, cover this highlight because highlight this part for the cheekbone is important to keep. Now I can work more on the neck part. So Yeah, so it's needed to pay attention on the neck part because it's important for a portrait. So you see this more so. A little sternal spine. 
and so forth. But for female, you don't have to be very ugly, sadotic, or smooth looking. I like the jaw, uh, the painting, like a drawing. It's the brush to, to work out the small. So if you're good at it, brush with different direction, small brush to puzzle, puzzle it out. It also could be good. Um, I also find this shadow, cast the shadow line, cast the shadow line, the neck is good to, to show that. And I feel like the, this line of the neck need a little bit darker just to create that detail. Also, and uh, this part, yeah, I think this is fixing the little stuff. The poetry needed to be accurate, and uh, sometimes you have to be patient to touch everything. And, uh, and that part for it. Show a shadow for it. That's one. And also the color one. A little bit darker. And you always need to remind yourself, okay, even you feel it's dark, but not any the black. You need to figure out what the color is there. Uh, what the color is that important? We're always doing it with color. So alternate from pencil to to brush to painting. The only only difficult is you 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 put down the 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 color, not put down just the the, the black. So this is something always needed to. The, the darkness is thing. Sometimes it, somehow the brush work is quicker, easier than the, the joint because it's, the brush could be, a, you can select a big brush just one time to hit a point. It's not like a drawing you have to keep on touching. Um, yeah, sometimes it, this is easier, sometimes it's not easy. Depends on what the, what the, about. So, so now I work on this side, the details, and adding a little more detail. Oh, okay, because the, the camera always hit my, yeah, I hit the camera. Always a hit to hit someone. Um, okay, I'm doing a little more shadow for this. Much more makes sense now. Okay. The brush is important. You, you're not using small brush to draw outline, but it's more like the, using the brush to create the different faces uh, of your object. So you always need to have a three-dimensional understanding of your object. So here, her clothes is more like a flower. So not, not, not very sure how to do this, but I think the only way I do this part it has a pattern of the flower. I used the blue color to do this. So make a little bit make sense. This is a close up. But this part is actually blocking my view. I cannot see it. And the, 
camera on, but I see that this is important to to draw based on the armpit shadows to not make a misunderstanding that her her crows are going inside. So this is the size of the shoulder that we have this portion. This part of the better to outline her, her breast. Okay. And the last thing I could do is to do is the hair or the forehead part and do some more details. I can do it in my napkin the skin and the hair. And the shadow of it. They need lots of darkness, a very big, big difference of the color, but it needs a more, more subtlety. Adding a little bit line, finally, adding a little bit line, show the texture of hair is okay. It could be a little bit expressive. See the line, could be a little bit expressive looking. That is okay. I think it's almost at the finishing. The camera. Hand tied up and on the top to it. Yeah, most of it is done. So I will um, I will go to it and I will post it together with the video. Yeah, I don't think so. So, so. so I will stop the video. You see that, yeah, the color is a little darker than, than the actual situation.